All right, we're back for another painting tutorial, and this one is for the new Namarty Thrallmaster. Uh, I guess he's not that new at this point. He came out a few weeks ago, but with the Deepkin Battle Tome releasing uh, either the day of this video's release or the day after, um, I figured now would be a great time to paint him. So I'm going to jump right in. Uh, he is primed with first Chaos Black Spray from Games Workshop and then with Wraithbone Spray uh, at sort of a 60 degree angle. I don't know. Sort of a Zenithal basically. Like this. All the way around. Not a true Zenithal because we're not picking a single light spot and just doing that. But just kind of from above. So it helps the contrast paint with some shadows and stuff. So the first color we're going to use is this Space Wolves Gray, and that's going to be for the skin. Um, I'm painting these not like the box art. I'm painting them in my own paint scheme, um, but you guys should still get a get an idea of how to paint this miniature and what sort of things look good and what don't, um, whether you paint this color scheme or your own. Just making sure with this that we don't apply this on, uh, too thick because we want his skin to be pretty light colored. We are going to have some very vibrant colors uh, for our armor and for the cloth on this guy. So we want the skin to not get lost in those. And so we keep it light to do that. Um, when you're zenithaling, I should say you can see like under here I have almost complete shadow there where no of the, none of the wraith bone got in um, that's personal preference you can zenith all um, by putting a ton of the lighter color on or a minimal amount of the light color on it just depends on how you want your finished miniature to look um, I kept this one probably 10 or 15 percent darker than I normally do uh, just because I kind of like the, um, not exactly the grim dark style, but just sort of more, I'm not sure exactly what I'm trying to go for. I kind of want to say more evil looking, but that's not really what I mean. Just sort of like foreboding, I guess. Just a little more mysterious and not bright and peppy looking, I guess. I don't know. I'll try to come up with a better way to describe it at some point. So the skin is all done, and I'm just gonna jump straight into the next color here. And that's gonna be Snake Bite Leather. Give this a good shake. And this is gonna be on all of the leather on this guy. So that is his pants and boots here. And then he's also got some straps holding various pieces of armor and stuff on. So right here, across his body. And then of course I gotta finish the boots. Um, I am gonna do, uh, normally I would do any like weapon wrappings or anything in this color as well. However, for this guy, his two swords he has on his back, that could be a wrap of some sort, but I'm going to do it like carved wood. So I'm going to do that in the uh, same color I do the rest of the wood. So if you're wondering why I'm not doing that in this color, that's why. So I'm just going to finish this up, get all the rest of the pants and boots done, pick out any other straps that are anywhere on this guy. And then I will come back and we'll do the next step. All right, we're back and our snake bite leather is all nice and dry. Now we're gonna move on to the armor. And for that, we're gonna use Blood Angels Red. This guy doesn't have a ton of armor on him, but he does have a couple pieces. So first I'll get these knee pads here. It's kind of funny, he actually has less armor on than the uh, 
the thralls that he is the alleged master of. I don't know exactly what this is on his wrist here, but I'm going to treat it as armor. Paint it in with the same color. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to do this in red, and I think I do. There's this little piece sticking up here that on the thralls is armor. Um, they don't have this sort of sash thing here. So, I'm gonna paint it as if it were armor. And it comes down here. Okay. And I'm being careful here because we are gonna use contrast on both the sash and the uh, tabard and the red will show through both of those colors. These little pieces right here. There we go. All right, uh, and then I think it's just his shoulder pad and his helmet. Again, being very careful not to Get it on any of the other things. If we get it on one of the completed colors, we can try to flush the area with water and hopefully get it off, but I prefer to not have to do that because sometimes it can still stain even if you get it off quickly. Oh, he also has this other wrist guard here as well. And this, um, this paint scheme is roughly derived from the paint scheme that I saw actually in the pre-order announcement of the Battletone. Um, it was a sort of Achillean green, which is coming later, and red color. And I don't know if that's an official color scheme of Games Workshop. It's not the official color scheme, like when they do box art and stuff, but it may be one of the other enclaves um, that I'm not 100% sure of. But even if it isn't, that's there's a single eel in that paint scheme on the pre-order announcement. So that's why I decided to do my army in. I think technically I've painted over his ear on both sides, which is probably not armor, but I think I kind of like, now that I've already done it and I don't want to go back and fix it, I think I kind of like the idea that he, uh, he has indents in his armor for his ears, and his ears just slide right in there. How he hears, I don't know. Not really my concern, I'm just going for a cool looking miniature. So, I'll let that all dry. And then we will come back and do the next couple of colors. Alright, we're back. And I'm going to do the cloth on him now. I'm going to use Achelian Green for that. I'd say it's appropriate for somebody called the Achelian Thrallmaster. Or however you might pronounce that word. I'm probably mispronouncing it, but that's okay. This is going to be for the tabard. Just again, being careful not to hit any of our other colors. And I'm wanting to put this on smooth. So doing long strokes where I can. There we go. And then of course making sure to get the back. Oh, I'm also going to do the, uh, the eel with this color. Um, all the creatures in my army are going to be this color. And, uh, so normally I wouldn't do things that are divergently different in the same color, like a tabard and a creature. 
But, uh, so I started off by painting one of the sharks for this army. And I painted him at Kelly and Green, and then I thought, well, alright, cool, I'm going to paint all my creatures this color. And then I got to painting Thralls, and I realized that Thralls then wouldn't have this color on them, and it was one of the main colors of my army. So I decided to paint all the tabards in this color. And then I get to this guy, and he has both a creature and a tabard. So it just happens that way sometimes. In order for the army to look cohesive, I think it was a necessity, and so I'm okay with it. But uh, I shouldn't say necessity. For how I wanted the army to look, I think it was a necessity. Um, I think you could have made the army cohesive by doing several other things, but this is how I wanted to do it, so I, that's the way I did it. Um, and so this guy might look a little weird with that, but that's okay. Alright, so we're going to go straight into the next color now, and that's going to be for the... Uh, sash and the sword decorations. And so for that, we're going to use Griffhound Orange. And we don't have to be as careful with this because the red around it won't show this orange very much. But we still do want to be careful around the brown and the green. Alright, there's the sash all done. And then we just get these right here. Make sure to avoid the skin. Alrighty. One little last bit there. And we're all set, I think. Yes, we are all set. Alright, so I'm going to let all this dry, and then we're going to come back and do the wood. Alright, we're back. And now we're going to move on to the wood, and for that we're going to use wild wood. And this is going to be for the handles of the swords that I talked about earlier, as well as the shaft of the spear. Um, he does have another weapon on his hip right here, but that is going to be entirely made of metal. So we won't have to do anything on that. As usual, just being careful to avoid the other colors. And the other parts on the sword are going to be done in metallic. So if we get some of this color on the unpainted parts, it's no big deal. Carefully putting it in between these uh, leather straps here. There we go. And then down the shaft of the spear. Trying to keep this as smooth as possible. So we don't get weird splotches on the shaft of the spear. And then the rest of that is going to be metallic. Alright, so that's that all done. I believe... Oh, nope, I was going to say I believe that's our last contrast paint, but it's not. And I'm going to do the last one right now. Apothecary White. We're going to put this on the fins of the eel here. I'm just going to take this, get the hair off my paintbrush first. I'm just going to take this and go down like this. It'll still have the Achillean green 
coming through, but it'll just set it off a little bit from the rest of the creature, which is all we want. Just making sure it's not pooling too much in any one place. We just want to tint these parts, not completely color them. side and do the same thing. There we go. And that'll that'll do for our purposes. So now I believe that was our last contrast color. I will let everything dry and then we'll come back and start in on the layer paint. Alright, we're back with all our contrast nice and dry, and now I'm going to move on to Black Metal from Scale 75. Uh, if you want the Citadel analog of this, it is Iron Warriors. And this is going to be the main bulk of the metal on this guy. Basically any metal that uh, might come in contact with the enemy is going to be this color. Uh, any decorative metal is going to be gold. So I'll start with the the spear here. Get all this up here. Make sure to get all the tops and bottoms of all these little detents. There we go. Good. And then the rest of the spear. Um, this is a way that I like to divide my metal when I'm painting a miniature, especially when I'm just trying to get them done quickly to battle-ready standards. Uh, I just split it in half. Uh, business, business end metal gets one color, decorative metal gets another color. Call it a day. There's obviously a lot of other ways you can explore metal and make it super fancy and stuff, but... When I'm just trying to get models in an army out on the board, that's a just a quick and easy system I like to use. So I'm just going to finish up this little sword here. There's no uh, no part of the blade of these swords can be seen, so we won't have to do any silver on them. So I'll just finish this one up, let it dry, or maybe not let it dry, maybe just come back immediately. And we'll do all the decorative metal. Alright, we're back and we're going to do the decorative metal now. And that's going to be in Retributor Armor. Just give it a good shake. Make sure it's all nice and mixed. And I got a smaller brush for this stuff because a lot of it is considerably thinner. Go in and paint on gold. So starting with this detail here on the tambard. Looks like it's hanging from this armor up here. Then I'm gonna do this little gemstone looking thing here. The one on his wrist as well. This trinket, which looks like a shark fin or shark uh, tooth hanging off here. I'm just gonna do that in gold. And then all the details on the sword are gonna be gold. got this little attachment to the belt for his other sword. I honestly don't know why this guy needs four weapons. He's only got two hands. I really don't know. I guess they're backups. Who knows. Um, and then all these little what look like gemstones in his armor. I'm going to paint these gold as well, so 
Let's get one here. Let's get a couple on his shoulder pad. I think he's got a couple on this. Oh, I did that one already. Uh, none down there. Did that one. Alright, that looks to be about it. So I'm just going to finish up the details on the sword here. And then we will officially, I believe, have all the primer covered. So, I will come back and we'll do some finishing up details. And then call him finished. Alright, we're going to do a couple little details here. First, with Teclas Blue, I'm going to, first on the eel, these little curly cues that are here. I'm just going to draw them in with this Teclas Blue just to make them pop a little bit. This doesn't have to be perfect. And let's get one that comes down here like this. There we go. And then he has some on this side as well. And then, on the Thrallmaster himself, the raised bits of his tabard here, I'm going to also do in this color. So, I'll finish this up, let that dry, give a little look over him, and then see what other little details we want to add. Alright, next for one of our small details, we're going to use some Cadian Flesh Tone, and we're just going to use this to paint in the mouth of the eel. And then we'll come back in a second and paint his teeth in individually. But we just want this color to be sort of like the, the soft, squishy bits of his mouth. Gums tongue if he has one. Things like that. I'm not up on uh, on eel anatomy, so I'm not 100% sure, but I did this on the uh, on the mouth of my shark. So I figured I'll do it on this guy as well. While that's drying, because I don't want to paint the teeth color straight over that, I'm just going to take some Ulfwan Grey, and I'm going to paint in the eyes of the eel. Just going to do that with a little dot. Just in there. And then on the other one, There we go. Alright, so I'll let that uh, the eel mouth dry. And then I'll come back, do the teeth, put some washes on him, and we'll call him a done. Alright, we're back. And I'm going to use Morgast Bone for his teeth. So, I'm just going to very carefully highlight each of his teeth here. If I miss a couple, it's no big deal, just giving the, the indication that teeth and gums are different colored. I think I might have sprayed him with a little too much primer, so we lost some of the detail in his mouth there. That will happen sometimes, if you're priming like a jackalope like I do sometimes, but that's okay. We have a, uh, we have the idea that there are teeth there. So now we're going to move on and do some null oil, and this is going to be on the silver and the gold on this guy. So I'm just going to start up here on the, the spear. You know, I keep calling this a spear, but really it's not a spear. It's got two points, so is it a dual spear? 
Uh, you call things with tr with three points of trident. Maybe this is a bident. I don't know. Just being careful not to get too much of this on any of the surrounding colors. I want it just on the areas of gold and silver. swords there we go I think that'll do so then the very last thing we will do is just put some Reichland flush shade in the eels mouth so right about now you should be seeing some pictures of him all done uh, with a base put on him I'm not going crazy on the bases for this army but I am trying to make it sort of like they're underwater I'm sure you could put a lot more effort into underwater bases, but this works for me, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, but yeah, if you like this kind of thing, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you don't like this kind of thing, well, at least I tried, right? Thank you everybody for watching, and I will see you next time.